Hi everybody, welcome to CS 1371 and in this video we'll be going over how to access and complete homework through MATLAB Creator. Before we get into that, I just want to share a few tips we suggest on how to store your .m files in your desktop and in your laptop. So what we suggest is that you have a general Georgia Tech folder where you can store all of your files related to your time here at Tech and in there make a folder per semester. The current one is spring 2022 and there have a folder for this class specifically, CS 1371. In this folder, you should create subfolders specifically for each homework. So for CS 1371, you should have a folder for homework 2, homework 3, homework 4, etc. And in that folder, you can store all of the .m files. This might seem tedious, but in the long run, it's super beneficial for this course as it's going to help you identify the directory when running your functions in MATLAB and also beneficial for you when studying for tests as it makes it a place that you can easily access your previous work. Now that we have that set up, let's go ahead and access MATLAB Creator. You should have received an email granting you access to the course by the professor, but if you have not, make sure to check your junk mail and if it's not there, please post your issue in Piazza and we'll sort that out as soon as possible. Once you do have access to this email, what you should be seeing is a, a green button that says CS1371 2022-01 Spring. Click on that. That'll direct you to a login page where you will enter your MathWorks login credentials. Please make sure that it's your Georgia Tech email and the password corresponds to that email. And once you've logged in, what you'll see is what's on screen. You'll notice that on the left-hand side are the files for homework two. And you'll notice that the problems are divided into levels. Each level varies in difficulty. Level one problems, they practice basic concepts and are valued at one point each. Level two problems build off of those concepts you practice in level one. These will be two points each. And level three problems are synthesis problems, which will have a value of four points each. To receive full credit in the homework, you must do at least one problem from each level to receive any credit for the assignment. Plus, you will have to do other exercises and it can be any combination you choose, whether it be all of level one or all of level two or all of level three. Just make sure that they add up to the max value, which is 16 points in this case, to get 100%. But anything extra that you do, which you are more than welcome to and encouraged to, will be capped at a 120%. Let's go ahead and do a problem together. I've chosen to do a level two problem, specifically door area. And once you click on that function, you'll be directed to the page with the problem summary. You'll be given the function name, door area, uh, and then the inputs, which describe their data type and how many we expect your function to take. And you'll also be provided with a description of the outputs, including its data type. Depending on the problem, you'll either receive like a note or a description that'll guide you on how or what to include in your function. So in this example, it asks you to round your answer to the nearest whole square foot. So make sure to include that. If not, your answers won't match with the test cases down below. So if you scroll down, you can see the test cases from which you will test the code that you will be writing on MATLAB. And if you scroll further down, you can see a text box with the title of function. This is where you will paste the code you write on MATLAB. So we're in MATLAB and we're gonna write our function, right? So we start with our function header. Make sure to always include that keyword function and your inputs and outputs can have whatever variable names you want, just make sure that they make the most sense to you. And please ensure that the function name matches the one in the MATLAB grader. So in this problem, it's asking us to find the area of the arched door. So the way we approach this problem was to divide the door into two shapes that we know how to take the area of, which is the rectangle and the semicircle. Since we're given the width and the height, we multiply those and that'll give us the area of the rectangle and then width the width, we can know the radius of our semicircle, and with that, find the area of that semicircle. The sum of those two areas will give us our total area, and remember that in the notes, it asked us to round our final area to the nearest whole square foot. So let's say we forgot how to use the round function. In MATLAB, uh, this very helpful tool you just write help in the command window and the name of the function that you want to know a little bit more about or find a description which is round and you click enter and it'll give you a description of how this function works what inputs it takes 
And as we can see here, that the round x, it rounds each element of x to the nearest integer. So to round, we're just going to do area equals round area, and that'll give us our final answer. As you notice, we've been commenting through our code. This is just a good coding practice. This will be super beneficial for you when studying for tests as you can see how you approached a problem and what was your thought process when completing this homework. Now that we've written down our function in MATLAB, we just need to save it in the folder that we designated at the beginning of the video, right? So you just go up top to the top left corner, click save, specifically save as, and then as you notice, like it saves the file with the same name as the function. Now make sure to copy paste the function you wrote in MATLAB into the function text box in the MATLAB creator and go to the code to call your function area. So just copy paste each line of code separately into your command window and you can verify if the answers are the same and this will check if your code is running properly. Once you've checked, all of our test cases that we provided you with your function in MATLAB, go ahead and in MATLAB Reader, click the button that says run function. This will just again, run these test cases that we've provided you. And it'll tell you as well, if there's any errors in your code, this won't necessarily tell you that your answer is wrong, it won't compare it with the right answer. What it'll do is like if you haven't defined a variable, or the round function is used improperly, those are the types of errors that it'll report, not exactly that your answer is wrong. So just keep that in mind. Once we've checked that, we can click Submit. And if all of our test cases give us our 25%, then you've solved this problem. You can go on to the next exercises from whichever level that you want. And you've done your first homework problem on MATLAB Grader. Since you submitted through MATLAB Grader, you don't need to submit anything through Canvas. It's going to be directly linked to your name and your profile. So don't worry about that. Just know that you do have a limited amount of submissions per exercise. And don't worry if the amount of submissions allotted doesn't allow you to complete one exercise. You have many more to choose from and to get those points from. I hope this overview of MATLAB Grader was helpful. But again, if you guys have more questions, feel free to ask any of your TAs. And yeah, thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of your semester.